Hello my Smooners! Welcome back to being Mrs. S. Now I'm going to sprinkle some BGM on you. <laughs> okay, thank you for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, I hope you feel a little wiser after watching my content. Make sure to click the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Come on, let's be friends. Oh, and before I forget, please check out Smoon City, my merch store. Uh, click on the tab and you'll see where it says store uh, to pick up one or more of these cool tees. There are also some other cool Smoon accessories that uh, may catch your fancy. I thank you in advance for your support and Welcome to the Smoon Universe. Yay! Okay, so um, today I want to talk about Oprah's special that aired on NBC last week, Monday. And it was called An Oprah Special, Shame, Blame, and the Weight Loss Revolution. Now, um, it was interesting because the network released it a few weeks after it was announced that Oprah was stepping down from the board of directors of WW, which was Weight Watchers before the rebranding and all of that. Um, it was also mentioned that she donated, well, she stated that she donated all of her shares in the company um, to uh, some African uh, American heritage and culture something um, and she did that so as to eliminate any perceived conflict of interest around her taking weight loss medication so I'm going to tell you what I think about that Oprah is a shrewd businesswoman WW Weight Watchers, with its rebranding and all of that, is a sinking ship. It really is. Those weight loss drugs uh, that have come out now are revolutionizing the whole weight loss landscape, especially now with the once a week shots that are out there, like Ozempic. Um, Ozempic and um, Monjaro. They are more effective and efficient for those who can tolerate it and they, they can thrive on it and they can afford it. So the WW's business, business model of before where they, uh, you, you know, you're, you're in, in touch with somebody, they mail you food, they put you on a program and do all, the, all those things is about to become a thing of the past. Like it's, it's not... It's not a business model that is uh, going to sustain itself. So right now they're in the process of evolving, you know, maybe before when they preached the self-control and all of that before. It's not working anymore. So now with their rebranding and their reconstructing or whatever you want to call it, they're buying into the fact that maybe people cannot help themselves. Um... So pharmaceutical intervention is necessary. And to that end, now, Weight Watchers is, by their own admission, now offering weight loss um, injections as, you know, pharmaceutical intervention as part of their program. So, in essence, Oprah quit Weight Watchers. She quit being on the board of directors. She sold off all her shares and oh uh, sorry donated them sold them and donated the proceeds or whatever she did um and i'm saying that as true to businesswoman she is even though she donated those shares maybe that's what she's done with that but i guarantee you she has stocked up on some eli Lee and noah nordis stock because that's the way of the future that is that is where this whole weight loss thing um is going so <laughs> You know, why, why hang on to Weight Watchers when that's about to, you know, 
go down uh, like a, a, a sinking ship because their 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 model is just not is just not sustainable anymore. It's not working anymore. These new drugs have just you know they've taken over. So anyway, I I digress. Let's get into the um, the special. Uh, and I want to start by saying that the World Health Organization says one in eight adults in the whole world have obesity. Um, my my <laughs> vice nooners, is that not what you call an epidemic? I mean, that's like a serious epidemic. And and I've been talking about this, you know, since you guys have been watching my journey and things like that. It is an epidemic, right? Oh my God, I'm so distracted by things around me <laughs> so um you know it's i guess when oprah showed up at the is it emmys or the oscars and she was looking all svelte and everything and people were like wait what's going on here so everybody had already started pretty much you know since ozempic came on on the scene anybody who loses weight especially when it comes to celebrities they immediately say ozempic 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 that's just been the thing i talked about it like people are using it to insult people to shame people to do all kinds of things and um you know now oprah is on it and she thought let me just go ahead and nip this in the bud before you know it goes any further now i don't think she actually stated which drug she's taking whether it's ozempic or Mojaro, monjaro or saxenda or victoza or whatever she she didn't quite state it but this um new special she did on nbc was to almost set the record straight and also to kind of say back off okay so basically what Oprah want, um, was trying to let the world know is that obesity is a disease. She wants people to stop shaming people for being obese, stop shaming people for taking weight loss drugs to lose weight. She also wants people to stop blaming themselves for being obese and to not be ashamed for having to take these drugs to lose weight. Um, She's trying to push the narrative that obesity is a disease. It's not a laziness problem. It's not, I'm lazy, you know, or I just love to eat. It's, it's a disease. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a compulsion. You know, she, she, the people on the show pretty much likened it to, people who have alcohol addictions and you know like any other addiction that's what what you essentially was trying to say when i watched it 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 felt like there was a very heavy emphasis on manjaro um as opposed to ozempic even though during the show she invited some two executives one from eli Lilly and the other one from novo, novo nordisk with regard to the specific drugs uh to her panel uh, a lot of the people that she interviewed for the special were on Monjaro. And the, those were the drugs that they, they said that they took most. And I don't even think Ozempic was mentioned maybe a little, you know, until the end when she, she brought on the executives. So when I watched it, I felt like part of the part of the special was kind of like a full-on ad for Manjaro, you know? Um, <laughs> everybody's... Er, Ozempic is now like Coke, you know, or um, what's the other thing that is a brand, but they but people use it for whatever, you know? So they want soda, so instead of saying give me a soda, they say give me a Coke. They don't necessarily want a Coca-Cola, but they, that's what they say. So now Ozempic is like the word for any drugs, GLP, GIP in this category. So it's Ozempic. So I feel as if the special was kind of like to say, hey, it's not only Ozempic that's out there. There's Monjaro and Monjaro even performs better than Ozempic. This is what people are out there saying. 
Anyway, so if you've been following my journey, you know I talked about how these drugs have been around for a very long time. Novo Nordisk has been on this for quite a while. Uh, they started out with Victoza, which was, I think, FDA approved in 2010. And then they followed up with Saxenda, which was FDA approved in 2014. And these drugs are essentially for weight loss. So they've been, they've been out there since, like, what Oprah was talking about it. She was like, what happened? How come I'm just finding out about it, girl? You weren't that serious about this. <laughs> you didn't, you weren't too bothered about it because you had done the research and it had seen that these drugs have been out there. The thing about it, um, the thing about all oh, the reason Ozempic has like gone nuclear and it's being talked about so much right now is because of social media. You know, in 2010 and 2014, the TikToks and the Instagrams and all these things were not like maybe as uh viral worthy or, or whatever like a, as it is right now i think it was tiktok that kind of threw this out there uh so social media is a very powerful medium and then that coupled with the fact that these drugs um have been perfected right so success like i said saxanda was there has been out victoza has been out those were shots that you had to give yourself every day, every day, every day, as well as other dietary changes or things you had to do as well, which of course on the Zempic, you have to change certain things about your diet. You also still have to exercise. Well, the difference between the two is that Ozempic is a once a week shot, you know? So they've perfected these drugs they're now more effective they're now more efficient and to the worst of the world out there everybody thinks that there's a lot less effort so people are experiencing results faster with a lot less effort so that's why we watchers and Jenny Craig and all of those they're 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 going away they're not going to last for too long with this because of what people see when they see people out there who who are um, on drugs like Ozempic and all the GLPs or whatever, or GIPs with, with Monjaro. So pretty much Novo Nordisk has been, it's, it's almost like every four years they put out a new version which is bigger and better, like more effective. So you are taking these drugs every week, uh, every day of the week then now you, you only get to take it once a week. Who knows, maybe the next iteration of it, you only need it for a month, you know? Um, so anyway, as I've shown you in my spooners, nothing comes easy. It may appear that way, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be put into it. So people think I'll give myself the shot and <laughs> magic, the weight disappears. No, you have to first of all you have to allow the drug to do what it's supposed to do um i talked about how it, after a while the efficacy wanes a, a, a lot you know and that's why you step up you start from 0.25 next thing you know you end up at the two meg dose because after a while that uh ability to kind of quell the the food noise which is what oprah talked about a lot in the in the special it kind of wanes right so then so they move you up to the higher dose and with Wagovi which is um the drug that is FDA approved for weight loss that Novo Nordisk did so it's it's the Ozempic comparable while Ozempic is for people with type 2 diabetes Wagovi is for people who um are obese and uh, it's for weight loss. It's, it's FDA approved specifically for weight loss, and it has those two extra dose. I think it's 1.7 and 2.4. 2.4 is the maintenance dose, while um, with Ozempic, it stops at two, which is this pen. Uh, so I, I took Ozempic, and the pen that I ended up with was the two meg dose. Um, 
I say meg, but it's it's milligram. Um, this was the dose that I ended up with for after my, I think it was my third, my third, third month or second month. I can't remember which one it was, but I, I use this, uh, for the vast majority of the time that I lost for the 11 months. Right. So what is that? Seven months. Yeah. So for seven months, I stayed on the two Mac dose. Um, So one thing um, that they did talk about on the special was that once you get on the drug, you have to stay on it for the rest of your life. And for me, and I'm speaking about myself, like I like to tell you guys, that is the one notion that I have to say that I disagree with. I don't think, especially if you're, if it's not diabetes related, right? If you if you if you have diabetes, that's Yes, that that I understand. But if you're not quite diabetic, if you maybe you were diagnosed with pre-diabetes and um, you have the chance of reversing it, and I think people with type two diabetes also who've already been diagnosed with type two diabetes, I think they can also reverse that that um, uh, what's the word the diagnosis? I think so. But anyway, so speaking about the pre-diabetes by pre-diabetics and people who are obese um, and they can pretty much reverse that whole thing to where they're out of that uh, uh, high A1C threshold and kind of things have normalized. I think that once the, you've done the work and you have lost the weight and you've, you've come down to a weight that, that um, you know is healthy I personally don't think there's a need to continue on the drug of course there's that chance of weight gain as I as I told you in my last video you know I pretty much gained 20 pounds back um, and and I and I and I mentioned that I would more than likely get back um, just for a month for the boost um, because I, I, I mentioned to you guys that I am continuing to work out. I have, uh, I, I do weights. I do my cardio every day, every day of the week. And I'm trying to incorporate the weekends as well. Yesterday was pretty good. We, 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 we went out. There was a little bit of walking done and things like that. So, you know. I'm staying active and I'm staying healthy that way and of course I'm continuing to manage what I eat every now and then I, I you know go outside of the management because life is for enjoyment <laughs> but for the most part um, I uh, you know I'm managing that so I don't think that that should be the narrative that you have to stay on these drugs forever, especially with the cost of them. I mean, who are they saying this thing to? Maybe they're talking to the people whose insurance actually covers it. But um, yeah, I, I don't think that one needs to stay on the drug, um, you know, forever. But I don't know. Everyone's everyone's different I'm off it now yes like I keep saying I might have to get back on it for just a little bit for a boost um, you know show you guys you know uh, my body kind of likes this size that I'm at it's very comfortable here this is a sweet spot but my ideal look kind of the way that I like to look uh, not that I don't like this I do <laughs> is between 150 and 164 you know but I keep telling you guys I'm pushing for 130 because of that 20 pounds that I know is easy for me to gain back so that's what I'm going to do uh, one thing I was a little disappointed about on the special was um, she didn't speak to the women who experience weight gain because of as a result of 
perimenopause and menopause. Um, which I think she may have fall, she may have fallen into that category. I'm not sure. I don't know. I've never seen pictures of Oprah from when she was a child, so I don't know if she was big all her life, but or if it just came on when she started, you know, getting into that that area. So the class of people who have serious hormonal issues um, that impact those receptors, which I believe is the category that I fell into. Uh, I've mentioned it before, you know, when I talked about how all this started. In my case, I was never obese as a child um, or, or as a young adult. I was almost to the point someone could say I was skinny. I don't think I was ever skinny, but you know, people would say, oh, you were so skinny. Like, when people see me with weight, weight on there, like, that's not the person I remember. So, it, it wasn't a problem for me as a child. So when they talk about how obesity is a disease and, and, and things like that, I, I do agree, but it became a problem for me in my mid to late 30s. And that's when the struggle started. Um, the hormonal issues such as insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and so on and so forth have been an absolute plague and the doctors are not addressing this. And I think that she missed a huge opportunity um, of those of us who are dealing with this to, to I wish she had mentioned that and talked about that on the show. Um, so, and, and not just talked about it, talked about the fact that doctors are not addressing this issues. Doctors don't know. My doctor doesn't know when I was talking about my hormonal issues and things like that. She brushed it off and said, no, that's not it. You know, just stop eating, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I don't know if it's that they are not bothered uh, or they cannot be bothered or they don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, a lot of things, they 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 don't take that part and, and, and hormones and these glands that produce these hormones, why they're not functioning the way they're supposed to function in women who start experiencing perimenopause and menopause. Uh, what, what doctors are very happy to do is to re <laughs> recommend hysterectomies and, and taking women's ovaries and their fallopian tubes and all of that out. Honey, wrong glands, people, wrong glands. Those are not the glands you need to be focused on so um these are the things that I, I wanted to bring up and i wanted to talk about i thought it was very interesting and and i'm actually quite happy that she did the special uh watching the special reminded me of what a great talk show host oprah is i mean it was a very short um presentation and I remember I was like wait is that it uh, can we have some more and the some more I wish we had was them talking about women like me who've experienced this hormonal issues that, that are just like so confusing and um, you know difficult to do to, to, to deal with anyway so do I agree with Oprah 100% I do um, However, I still believe there is a level of responsibility that we, the individuals who are dealing with, need to own up to and we have to address for ourselves. Not everybody, it's one size doesn't fit all. She was talking about obesity being a disease. I do agree that that is the situation for a lot of people. And for a lot of people, that's not the issue. For a lot of people, it might actually be just laziness, um lack of activity you know you're not working out you're eating the wrong foods you might not even be, you might not even be eating a lot you're just eating the wrong foods um hormonal issues things that i've dealt with there's a plethora of different things they all fall and you know on one hand you can say well they all fall in the same category they're all diseases in if you kind of dig deep and look into it there's something that's behind it yes I agree um, so 
it, it really it really was a a good it really was a good presentation it was my stomach is is <laughs> making sound what's i'm hungry maybe i should go and eat um it really was a good presentation i like the fact that she she continued to emphasize you know stop the blame game stop the shame game however you want to lose the weight it's your prerogative it's your business nobody needs to be in it i personally don't care right i said it i i i remember when i went to the doctor and i said write me this prescription call my insurance company do whatever they need to, to be done to get me this prescription and they just they didn't care they wrote the prescription but they didn't care to, to follow up with the insurance company i remember saying to myself this is my life i have to take control of the situation because i'm trying i've tried every single thing losing weight has never been a problem for me and this time around it was and i said there's something deeper than what's going on it's not that i'm not you know putting in the work it's not that i'm not cutting down on what i'm eating it's not that i'm not cutting out certain things something else is an issue and i need help and to me ozempic was that help that i needed and it worked it was perfect and i'm very happy and i'm very thankful that um you know i was able to get it and it was able to work for me so anyway what are your thoughts uh let me know if you watched the special and if you did you know do you share the same feelings i i have about the missed opportunity of talking about us the women in this category um oh uh, what are your what what ideas do you have what are your comments share them in the comment section below okay anyway thank you for joining me my spooners until my next video don't forget to live laugh love love you my spooners